So I'm going to introduce Lee Tesh. Um, Lee's worked in arts and health for over 20 years, um, and before that she worked in health. Um, and she, her current focus is on how um, art can intersect with renal dialysis, which sounds fascinating to me, because I always like a captive audience. <laughs> I mean that very respectfully, but, but it's, it's a significant opportunity, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's a significant opportunity. I mean that, I do mean it respectfully. Um, and she also works um, with an organisation at the hospital called Inscape, which supports artists working in hospitals with working with children. So thanks, Lee. Thank you. Right. Um, well, thank you for coming, and what an introduction to have had these beautiful stories told to us and that um, in this space today. Um, and to begin with, I would also acknowledge. Uh, the people who have lived in and belong to this land for centuries and acknowledge their stories and the art that's been made and the stories that have been told for centuries from the Tasmanian Aboriginal people in the past and will continue into the future. Um, yes, I'm talking about renal dialysis and arts and health. And I know that within this space and certainly within this, I, in, in this, this morning session where we've seen stories and how we tell our stories through art, we know that arts and health are interlinked and inseparable. But what I'm going to talk to you today is particularly looking at this group of people that have renal dialysis. Um, I'm doing this because last year I began a PhD, so that's been a bit of a journey for me. Um, and that's been looking specifically at the area of renal dialysis. And I'll be looking at some of the literature that I found out, what I found out of what we know. Um, and I'll also be peppering it with some slides that'll have quotes from people from an evaluation I did in Waterford in Ireland, uh, where they've had a renal program uh, with art artists working there for around 11 years. So you'll see bits of that throughout the presentation. OK, so um, when we think about renal dialysis, as Sam rightly said, it's a captive audience. So people uh, with kidney disease, end-stage renal disease, chronic kidney disease, have um, significantly impaired kidneys so that the, the job of the kidney needs to be done by a machine. So people um, might do this process at home. There's a, a peritoneum um, process as well that they can do. But what we're looking at today are people who come into a centre or a unit where there are machines, much like the one next to this woman in this photograph, where the machine or a dialyzer that does the job of the kidney. It filtrates the blood, it takes out excess fluid. So it's a life-saving treatment. People um, who have chronic kidney disease will die unless they have some kind of dialysis treatment or they go on to have a, a kidney transplant. So, um, so, for pe so it's obviously a huge impact on someone's life. They have to come in for treatment in these units usually about three times a week and they have to be attached to a machine quite literally for around three to five hours. Uh, I'm going to just keep going with the slides. So I kind of wanted to look at what literature was out there because um, as, as again, as Sam said, artists have kind of looked at this issue over these years and thought this is an opportunity for art making, an opportunity for artists to be in these spaces. And, and there have been all over the world a number of units that have taken on artists that work usually individually with patients um, along what they're wanting to work on, but there's often a range of programs, a range of art. So it might be drawing, it might be music, it might be um, writing, poetry, painting and so forth. Um, there's a couple of studies that have looked at these kind of multi-art programs and they're the kind of um, results that, um, that were shown, that the outcomes of those programs that people do feel that, that relieves the boredom and improves the mood, um, builds those connections, but it also helps with things like um, managing pain and reducing um, and improving mood. So, and that was certainly um, reflected in the kinds of comments that I received when I talked to people who were experiencing that program in Waterfin in Ireland, um, that people did enjoy it, uh, they, they were uh, relaxing, they anticipated and looked forward to dialysis because it was an opportunity to engage with art. Um, why is that little hand there? Oh yeah, good. Um, they also talked about um, gaining skills, becoming um, more confident in areas and, and gaining skills over time. And for some people who had been very unwell due to their kidney disease, the opportunity to um, come into dialysis actually made them feel better. And so they were actually re able to re-engage in arts that they may have done before, um, like the comment at the end. 
So probably many of you here engage in some kind of creative activity. Uh, and has anyone had the experience that when you're totally involved in creating, whether it's in the kitchen or in an art form or in the garden, that you lose all sense of time? Has anyone had that experience? Um, so we can't, it is a mindful process. It's a very present process to be involved in arts engagement. What is really going on in that space? Um, and one fellow talked to me about that, um, saying that, you know, that engagement, and it's a great time passer. You know, it's a kind of different quality uh, to how we engage in time. So you can see the relevance for someone who might be on renal dialysis. Um, I think keep going. Can you can hear me all right? I've got a bit of a croaky voice. Um, some of the studies that I looked at um, were specifically looking at art forms, and I did a bit of a review over the last 12 years of what kinds of programs were evaluated and how they were measured, and a number of them looked at, particularly at music. And, and I think that's an interesting one because particularly, again, when you're hooked up in a, with a blood pressure pump on one side and a various cannulas and tubes on the other, it's actually hard to participate in actively engaging in art sometimes for some people. So passively or receptively engaging in music was very powerful for people. And so there have been some studies that have been done which have been really clinical trials. They've looked at an experimental group and a control group and they looked at various scales before and after. And they found that it did have an impact. Listening to music, either live or recorded, had an impact on pain and their adverse reactions. People going through renal dialysis, as well as often feeling extremely fatigued, can also have pain, um, some adverse reactions. There's sometimes itching and different sensations that they go through. And in all that, these kinds of difficulties seem to be eased through being involved in the arts. Okay. So there seemed to be quite a bit of, of, of evidence within the data that I looked at and the studies that I looked at to say that this period of time that people are in dialysis, that it, the arts, engaging in arts can help cope with that or help ease that process a little bit. As I said, it can be quite difficult. To, and I wanted to look a little bit further in what else was going on for people um, during this time. And there was, because there were other things that people told me in the experience in Waterford and some other, other suggestions in the literature that there was actually something going on that was beyond what was just going on in each session. So the arts provided, the, the dialysis process provided time and that time was an opportunity to reflect. And in many ways people use that time to reflect on their situation, on their condition, on their illness. And, took time, and arts gave them a mechanism or a vehicle to actually do something with that reflection, to make sense of it. I should probably actually keep looking at my notes. Just have to flip over a few pages. Um, so as well as this reflective time, there was also a sense that it was dealing with people's stories and giving people a chance to understand and sort where they were and how they were within, within a very limited situation and in the midst of illness, they're actually giving opportunities of expanded um, lives and seeing themselves beyond what was just presenting in the situation. So people talked about very transformational results. People talked that their life changed through being involved in arts, that the dialysis situation gave them the opportunity to be involved in, like this comment here. Oh, there's someone taking photos. <laughs> Um, so that it, what became evident more and more as I looked at the literature, for example, a study that was using drawing to help understand the situation of dialysis, and also from what people were telling me in the evaluation, is that people's, people felt that actually arts gave them a chance to actually expand and be bigger, that there was something going on that was beyond what was their treatment of dialysis and beyond what was their illness. And that took me to kind of looking... Um, so for many people, they took on roles and their identity became changed through having involvement in the arts and having involvement in broader than just what was going on in, with treatment. Is that comment there. That took me into looking into story. Um, I'm a performer and a storyteller, so I had an interest and in, I'm looking at story particularly in this space. 
But stories, you know, we've seen them this morning. I don't probably need to tell you about it, but there is literature around that talks about the value have we have our personal stories, we have our cultural and social stories of how we connect with people. And I think the two next speakers are also talking about stories, so this is quite important. And it's not just about telling something that happens, it's actually around feeling and emotion, and it helps us make sense of who we are. Um, Arthur Frank is an author who's kind of looked a lot at this. He talks about his own experience of illness and how that impacts on our story. When we have a serious illness, it's a disruption to our story, to our sense of ourselves. And story and the reciprocity of being able to tell a story and listen to a story and have it fed back to us is some of the processes that we go through in order to make sense of who we are, particularly after illness, which is a significant impact on our lives. So we learn from hearing from others and we learn from absorbing others. Also talked about it being an embodied experience, particularly when the body is ill, that being able to tell stories uh, through that body, that broken body, is part of working out who, how we are and who we are in the world. Um, Arthur Frank also talked a little bit in, in one of his books around the complexity of modern day illness and modern and postmodern our postmodern understanding of health and illness, that we have increasingly complex situations with our healthcare, we have increased advances in technology, we have, many, uh, we have a tremendous amount of expertise, and particularly we can understand that from chronic kidney disease and the medicalisation of a, of a treatment that we might have, um, and people surrender care to experts. And there's also a rise of increased, uh, also a rise of chronic illness, and many people might be seen to be well, but not really well. So it kind of is an unseen illness in many ways, and this kind of impacts on our stories. And there has been a few story, a few studies that have been done looking at people who have a lived experience through their stories and narratives of kidney disease, um, and some of those themes that they describe connect to those um, themes that I talked in the last slide, that there is a discourse around dependency, around paternalism in terms of the healthcare system, offering them uh, advice and um, support, and there being dependence on that, confronting decisions and consequences. For people with um, kidney failure and going into renal dialysis, it's a life-saving treatment. So on the one hand, it gives them freedom and independence, but on the other, it's an extremely restrictive process and um, they often get caught in a duality that um, many other conditions that are life-limiting, where there's that situation on the one hand, freedom, the one hand, restriction. On the other hand, being seen or uh, being seen as ill and being seen as well. Uh, caught in between that sort of living but not living and being reliant on a service or a treatment. So there's all those kind of dualities and complexities that people experience. Um, and one author describes it as a pervasive liminality of this duality of, of where they sit. Um, interestingly, you know, that, that's where kind of that, to me, contrasts a little bit with the stories that I heard at Waterford when I did that evaluation, where people were talking about how their world expanded because of the role of the arts. So I think that's a really interesting area to look at. Um, most of the studies I looked at were studies from around the world. There are a couple of studies that have been done on renal dialysis units uh, in Australia, um, in Indigenous communities. And this particular study, it talked about similar issues of the dependence as well as some differences in cultural understandings between healthcare providers and the people who are consumers of dialysis. Um, but why I picked this one is that this is an image from a woman who had had dialysis who was on the um, advisory group for this particular study and she represented um, the, th the findings of that study in a painting. And I think that's a really uh, interesting that there are a few indications and a few, you know, there's not a lot of research in this area, but there's a few indications of where art's been used as a dissemination process so people can find out what is being discussed and what is being learned about stories that we need to find out about that and have that further conversation. And by disseminating it through art forms such as a painting, um, there's been some other, um, there's been a play that was written from the stories of young people on dialysis. So those kinds of things can really build a community voice, much the same as Geordie's kind of talking about his situation this morning by, um, by disseminating it further through art forms, which is how we tell our story through the, how, through the arts. 
Um, the other aspect of that is that community can be very involved and given agency and empowerment through art forms. One of the Indigenous communities that I read about decided to make films about uh, which were aimed at education and prevention for young people because that was seen as important for their community. Uh, some of the people I spoke to in Waterford talked about the value of having the bigger picture of having art that they could talk about. It wasn't just talking about being involved and being ill and having treatment. It was actually about something bigger, something um, to share with family. And it also impacted on staff, that they saw their relationship with people differently because they understood them further from what they were talking about in their art forms. So I think the benefits of arts in renal dialysis, much the same as in many, probably many health issues and many chronic health issues, is that it's a real way to understand the patient voice or the person's voice. It's hard to know what term to use, the consumer voice, but people who are experiencing it to hear their voice. Um, the opportunity that I had in Waterford, a lot of people had written books, they'd done exhibitions, they'd um, produced various artworks that were also um, collected in books. Um, and the impact of those works were talked about and experienced by people and were very powerful. They also leave a legacy for people who, ha who, move, who may die or who may have transplant or move on from that. And one, as one fellow I spoke to talked about the benefit that was for having his mother's paintings. And it makes an impact on the environment. Uh, so I talked a little bit when we talked about music, about that receptive uh, value of, of the arts. You know, seeing beautiful things and seeing an environment can help us in recovery. And that was seen as important as the value of the arts. Um, as some of the books that were written in that. So I guess I'm just better flick to see if there's anything I've forgotten from this paper that I shouldn't have really read you. Um, so I guess um, in concluding, I would see that there are benefits to arts in renal. I'm about to, to take on a research project with the Nephrology South um, unit here in Hobart. But I think it's really informed for me this journey looking at the literature and also looking at some of what's going on in programs that there's a space that the art can bring to people on, in attending renal dialysis units that's around managing and coping and enabling easing of that situation. There's also that within this midst of illness that there's opportunities through the arts to reflect and also to consider and respond um, through telling our stories through the arts and this has an impact on the community. There was some um, talk also within the, uh, the literature around enabling communities and we know much of this conference has talked about how do we actually enable people to move on and to have an impact on what they wish for and I think the arts is, is a great way of doing that. Um, so my PhD student, uh, I, I am a student but my project um, is around personal uh, understandings through storytelling for people with, rent, with kidney disease, chronic kidney disease. So I'm doing that through um, talking to people. I'll be following a, a, a group of people who are attending renal dialysis over a year and taking qualitative interviewing uh, over that time. And I'll, we'll also be sharing those stories and creating some creative works out of that, either installation or performance works. And those works will then have an impact into the broader community and with health professionals. And I'll also be finding out from health professionals um, how they make sense of the stories of people who have chronic kidney disease. And um, am, I, am I all right? You haven't said a minute yet. Am I all right for time? We're running a little behind, but you can say thank you to everyone. Okay, and actually, thank and, you. And just, uh...